The umbilical cord stamp of a baby may look a bit daunting, particularly if you don't know what you expect. Is the color normal? Is it supposed to be smelly? Can I touch it? And most importantly, how should I clean it? Right. So in this video, we are going to discuss what to expect and what's normal when it comes to your baby's cord stamp. Moreover, we are going to share with you the best way to take care of the cord and we're also going to explain why the first 24 hours after your baby was born play a crucial role in avoiding an infection of the baby's cold. Yes, and then finally, we also want to make you aware of three medical problems related to your baby's cold stump mm -hmm. and how to detect them. This is Natalie, a pregnancy and birth consultant and TCM therapist. And that's Matthias, a researcher and science geek. And on this channel, we help mummies and their babies naturally and science-based. So let's talk about your baby's umbilical cord stump. As long as your baby is in your womb, the umbilical cord supplies oxygen and nutrients from your placenta to your baby. Mm -hmm. To connect the baby with the placenta, the cord passes through an opening in the baby's abdominal wall, which consists of several layers of connective tissue, abdominal muscles and other things. But after your baby was born, that cord is obviously no longer needed because your baby can eat and breathe on their own, right? And so the midwife is going to clamp the cord in two places and then cut it between the two clamps, leaving a short stump behind. And just did you know, the cord does not contain any nerves, which is why it won't hurt when the cord is cut, right? right. In any case, two things are now going to happen. First, the stump is going to fall off. And this usually happens sometime during the first three weeks after birth, mm -hmm. normally leaving nothing but a sweet little belly button behind. Right. <laughs> and then second, normally that opening in your baby's abdominal wall is going to close, which means that the abdominal muscles just seal the opening. And we are going to see at the end of this video what could happen if the opening does not close. Now initially, as long as your baby's cord stump has not fallen off yet, it is really important to take care of it as good as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And the main reason why this is so important is because we want to avoid that the cord gets infected since an infection can have serious consequences for the baby. Right. But what most people don't know is that process of preventing an infection starts right after your baby was born. So let us show you what we mean by that. Traditionally, lots of different substances have been proposed to take care of the stump after the cord is cut. Mm -hmm. Examples include alcohol, human milk, plant extracts, olive oil, antibiotics or antiseptics, and many more. The intention behind those substances has been to prevent bacteria from spreading in the area of the stump because bacteria can cause an infection. Yes, however, research has shown that not all bacteria which colonize around the stump are bad bacteria in the sense that they cause an infection, right? Most importantly, it was found that during the first 24 hours after birth, the stump is colonized by bacteria from the mother's skin flora if the baby is in close contact with the mother during the first 24 hours after birth. That's important because, first of all, according to the World Health Organization, a newborn baby does not develop their own protective flora during the first 24 hours after birth. Yes, and second, these good bacteria from the mother's skin flora may protect the baby's stump from bad bacteria. Yeah. For example, according to research from the World Health Organization, you're going to find significantly less bad bacteria and infections in babies who are kept close to their mother during the first 24 hours after birth yeah. compared to babies who are kept in nurseries. Right. And so obviously we don't want to destroy this good bacteria by applying alcohol, for instance. Right. So the first step in preventing an infection of the umbilical cord stump of your baby is really the skin-to-skin -skin contact between you and your baby over the first 24 hours after your baby was born. The second step is early and frequent breastfeeding given that breastfeeding is an option, of course. Yeah. According to research from the World Health Organization, early and frequent breastfeeding will provide the newborn baby with maternal antibodies. 
together with the bacteria from the mother's skin flora, these antibodies will help fight off infections coming from any bad bacteria on the baby's cold stump. Right, and then the third step of preventing an infection of the cold stump is daily cleaning. Now, we have already heard that applying any substances is not the best way to take care of the stump because it may not help fight off bad bacteria, right? But there is also another reason why you should not apply any substances at all. Scientific research has found that letting the stump dry out is actually the fastest way to get rid of the stump. To be precise, scientists have found that the time until the cord falls off is significantly shorter in case of a simple clean and dry approach compared to when you use any substances, including things like olive oil, human milk or alcohol. Right. And just that you know, dry cord care is also what both the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists recommend because keeping the area clean and dry is really the best way to avoid an infection. Yeah. So now the next question is, how do you actually take care of the baby stump on a daily basis? <music> So first of all, let the stump dry off. In order to do that, expose the stump the air whenever possible. Mm -hmm. Second, clean the stump with warm water only. Ideally, you do this on a daily basis, but at least every other day and in particular when the cord is soiled, mm -hmm. right? When you do clean the stump, please wash your hands first before touching it. And then just use a cotton swab or a cotton pad and warm water to clean the area. Afterwards, let it dry. Yes, and by the way, as long as the stump has not fallen off yet, it is best to stick with a sponge bath because it allows you to avoid washing the area around the stump. But just that you know, the cord can get mm. wet. It won't do any harm, okay? So your baby could also have a bath even before the cord comes off. However, obviously, it is much easier to keep the area dry if you clean the stump the way we have showed you before, instead of letting the stump soak in water. That's right. Third, in order to keep the cord dry and clean, keep the front of your baby's diaper down so that the stump is not covered. Yes, and fourth, avoid clothes that are too tight. Of course, it's okay to pull clothes over the stump. After all, you have to keep your baby warm, right? Right. Just make sure that the clothes are not too tight, okay? Yeah. Now, as time goes by, you're gonna notice that the color of the stump changes. In fact, over the first couple of days, the stump is gonna turn black and appear dry and hard. Mm -hmm. But don't worry, that's totally normal. Remember, we want it to dry out so that it falls off all by itself. And we cannot emphasize enough how important it is that you do not try to speed up the process, for example, by pulling or cutting the cord. Mm -hmm. You would do more harm than good, right? Just let it dry off naturally. And then once the cord stump fell off, it could be that you are gonna see some dark red or brownish blood or a clear or yellowish sticky fluid. Mm -hmm. This is totally normal too, as long as the belly button is not actively bleeding, okay? Right. But if you're having any doubts, please call your provider. It's always better to be on the safe side, okay? Yeah. Now the final question is, what if things are not normal? For example, what if your baby's cord stump is red or smelly or oozes pus? So let's have a look at the three most common medical problems in regard to a baby's cord stump. So first of all, obviously it could be that the cord stump gets infected, which is exactly what we are trying to prevent in the first place, right? However, sometimes a baby may just be unexpectedly exposed to bacteria, which can increase the chances of an infection. Luckily though, as long as you follow our approach of taking care of your baby's cord stump, then an infection does not happen very often, right? right. Nevertheless, it is really important that you closely monitor your baby's stump because an infection on the cord can be life-threatening for your baby, okay? Yeah. So if the skin at the base of the stump turns red or seems inflamed, if the area bleeds, if the cord oozes pus, if your baby develops a fever and most importantly, if there is a foul smell, then you should call your baby's doctor. This can all be signs of an infection. That said, please note that the very act of the cord separating from the baby's body itself can be accompanied by small amounts of sticky fluid, mm -hmm. 
which may remind of mucus in its appearance, right? right? This is something which can easily be confused with pus, but it's not necessarily a reason to worry. Still, we do recommend talking to your doctor if you see such a sticky fluid, because for the untrained eye, it is really very difficult to distinguish that sticky fluid from pus. That's right. The second complication is called umbilical granuloma. Sometimes a small reddened mass of tissue forms in the belly button after the umbilical cord has fallen off. This umbilical granuloma very much looks like a little red lump and it might drain a light yellowish or clear discharge. The good news is though that this condition does not cause the baby any pain mm -hmm. and it usually goes away within a week or so. Yeah, however the risk here is that it could become infected which is where ideally a doctor has a closer look. Mm -hmm. Luckily, if the doctor finds that it is indeed umbilical granuloma and if it is not infected, then there is a very simple treatment to get rid of the problem. Right. Your doctor will show you exactly what you need to do. So if you do spot something that looks like umbilical granuloma, please let the doctor have a closer look. Right. And then the third complication is called umbilical hernia. As mentioned at the beginning, as long as your baby is in your womb, the umbilical cord passes through an opening in the baby's abdominal wall. Mm -hmm. And then after birth, the abdominal muscles of the baby normally seal that opening completely. Yeah, unfortunately though, in some cases, that opening does not close properly, leaving a weak spot in the abdominal wall, which is called umbilical hernia. Mm -hmm. And in very rare cases, it could be that some internal part of the body, like for example the intestines, pop out into a hernia sac. This can either be through the navel or just close to the navel and it may get bigger when your baby cries or coughs or strains and smaller when your baby relaxes. Now umbilical hernia may look like a terrible disease but it's actually not uncommon in infants and in particular in premature babies. Mm -hmm. The good news is it is normally not a painful condition and in many cases the opening in the abdominal wall will disappear within the first year. Yes, however it could also last longer. In fact the American Association of Pediatrics reports that about 90% of umbilical hernias close on their own by the time the child is 4 years old. Unfortunately if it does not disappear by itself, surgery is really the only way to fix umbilical hernias. Yeah. We know that many people on the internet claim that binders can help fix umbilical hernias. But you see, even if a binder can help push the hernia sac back through the abdominal wall, it does not solve the underlying problem. Mm -hmm. And that underlying problem is that there is an opening in your baby's abdominal wall which is not completely sealed by the muscles. Right, so in brief, either you wait for the problem to disappear by itself, mm -hmm. which is a safe approach according to the American Association of Pediatrics, since umbilical hernias normally do not cause any problems. Right. Or you go for surgery. In any case, normally neither umbilical hernia nor umbilical granuloma cause any troubles, mm -hmm. but it's good to have a doctor have a closer look at it, right. right? What you should be wary of though is an infection of the cord because it is life-threatening to your baby. Mm -hmm. However, you can considerably decrease the risk of an infection if you follow our tips that we have shared with you in this video. Right. We really hope that you found our video helpful. If you did, we would be super grateful if you could leave us a like. Yes. And for more useful tips and tools on pregnancy and baby related topics, make sure to subscribe to our channel and to the bell.